In the era that followed World War II, the United States is accused of illegally replacing foreign governments around the world. Firstly, in countries that are allied with the Soviet Union, basically the communist countries, and later also any other country that challenges the US American hegemony, whether in the Middle East or Latin America or in vital places such as in Central Asia. The operation that illegally removes a government and replaces it with another government is called coup d'etat, a French word that literally means stroke of state. One of the important examples of American engineered coup d'etats in the 21st century is the 1953 Iranian coup d'etat, which was the overthrow of the democratically elected Mohammad Mossadegh in favor of a monarchical rule led by the Shah, which is until this moment is called an opposition. The operation that was orchestrated basically by the United States and the UK, this is a self-confessed thing that they revealed their secret documents later so we know that the CIA planned it. This operation was called Operation Ajax. The reason behind the coup in Iran was that the former democratically elected Prime Minister Mossadegh nationalized Iran's oil industry, which angered the Brits and the British companies, especially the BP, oil company who had a monopoly over the Iranian oil. That's why the Iranians, when they, let's say, triggered a revolution in 1979, they adopted an anti-American policy because in the era that preceded the revolution, they were ruled by a monarch, basically a dictator, which gave a priority to the foreign corporations, multinational corporations to invest in Iran and also to take over the Iranian oil. So when the revolution happened, the, the Shah was replaced and another leader came, which is Al Khomeini, and that was an Islamic revolution, mostly anti-American and anti-Israeli government. Another clear example was the recent two American attempts to replace uh, Maduro, to remove him and replace him with uh, Guaido, which is, uh, he's an opposition figure that represents the capitalist interest and the multinational uh, corporation's interest as well, similar to a Shah in Iran. And these two coup attempts happened in 2019 and 2022, and they were failed. Why I'm mentioning these examples? There are so many examples, especially in Latin America, but I'm mentioning these two examples right now because recently the former U.S. ambassador to the U.N. and the national security advisor to Trump, John Bolton, confessed on CNN that the U.S. actually plans for coup d'etats around the world. And he mentioned Venezuela and he even said that one of his tasks was to plan for coup d'etats. Take a look. It's not an attack on our democracy. It's Donald Trump looking out for Donald Trump. It's a once-in-a-lifetime occurrence. I don't know that I agree with you, to be, to be uh, fair, with all due respect. Uh, one doesn't have to be brilliant to attempt a coup. Uh, I disagree with that. As somebody who has helped plan coup d'etat, yeah. not here, but, you know, other places, uh, it takes a lot of work. And that's not what he did. It was just stumbling around from one idea to another. Ultimately, he did unleash the rioters at the Capitol. As to that, there's no doubt but not to overthrow the Constitution, to buy more time to throw the matter back to the states to try and redo the issue. And if you don't believe that, you're going to overreact. And I think that's a real risk for the committee, which has done a lot of good work, mostly when the witnesses testify, not when the members are opining. Uh, it is invariably the case that when you go too far trying to prove your case, you undermine it. So Joe Bolton publicly admitted that the U.S. Engage, engages in covert and illegal operations to overthrow foreign governments, a precedent that reminds me of the statement of Mike Pompeo, the former foreign minister of the United States under Trump, where, when he bragged in front of a big audience that he had the full training, full entire training by the CIA to lie, to cheat, to steal. Take a look. When I was a cadet, What's the first, what's the cadet motto at West Point? You will not lie, cheat, or steal, or tolerate those who do. Mm. I, I, I was the CIA director. We lied, we cheated, we steal, stole. It's, it was like, we, we, had, we, had entire, we had entire training courses. Uh, 
it. Uh... This also reminds me, by the way, of the US ambassador to Russia, Mikhail or Mikhail Macfaul, uh, when he said, I think a few months ago, that the US lied to Ukraine on its NATO membership. They purposely lied to Ukraine and um, raised expectations on the Ukrainian side that Ukraine will join one day NATO, but they were lying to Ukraine. And by doing so, they could have caused all this mayhem that we are witnessing today in Ukraine because Russia uh, objected Ukraine's um, joining uh, NATO. Take a look. In 2021, we kept reiterating that Ukraine was going to join. We kept saying that over and over again. So my, so, my, so, my, so, my, so my, so my, so our, our diplomats are lying? Yes. Oh, so, <laughs> yes, that's the real world, guys. Come on, I come get on. That, but, but you can, that's then, the and, real and yet, world. Wait a sec. Our diplomats are lying all the time, yet the Russians should trust them when they offer assurances. So, after all this dishonesty, um, not only with the enemies, but also with the allies, uh, how can any, some may ask, how can any nation trust the United States again? And if if, if we base our conclusion on this analysis and on, on these events that we have discussed, and this is just the tip of the iceberg, like there are tens of attempts by the US to overthrow foreign governments in the past century. And a lot of people were and still suffering because of the American covert operations. The recent example is in Syria, Operation um, Sycamore. And if we, if we want to conclude it based on these events and analysis, is the saying of Henry Kissinger correct when he said, it may be dangerous to be America's enemy, but to be America's friend is fatal. What do you think about this? Do you think that in the recent example in Ukraine, for example, the allies of the United States are paying the highest price and namely the European Union countries because uh, yesterday euro and dollar were almost like one euro is equal to one dollar so this was the one of the uh, major blows to the European economies because of the tensions with Russia and the sanctions and also Russia's blackmailing to Europe uh, via cutting the gas and uh, claiming that there are some technical problems some would say these are not blackmailing, but I think uh, Russia is also using energy as a weapon. And uh, some may argue rightly so, some may say no, but it's not my position to say if it's right or wrong, but this is a war. But let me know your opinion in the comments below. Do you think the, uh, you can trust the United States, especially as an ally to the United States or not? And guys, if you're new, please consider subscribing. It really helps me. Also click the like button, it's free. And if you want to support my independent commentary work, you can become a patron. Link in the description below. And see you next time.